Today we're going to learn how to make a beer can chicken. This is one of my favorite things to make. I'll make them two at a time on the grill. They're better than rotisserie chicken. And it's pretty simple. First you're going to need a beer can. You can do this with just a beer can, but the chicken's unstable. That's why there's a wide variety of chicken stands on the market. We're going to go through the different types of stands here. This is your basic stand. This one happens to be from Mr. Barbecue. It's under five bucks. Pretty much all it's going to do is stabilize the chicken on the grill. That's really all you need. But then we get a little fancier. This is a porcelain coated stand by Grill Friends. As you can see, it would be really easy to clean this. It's dishwasher safe and you pour your liquid in. This is the Stephen Rachelin chicken stand. It comes with its own can or you can place a beer can in there. It has its own drip pan. Drip pans are important in this process. And then you have the Mr. Barbecue vertical chicken roaster. As you can see, it's a grill walk inside. You can put your vegetables in here while your chicken's standing on it. And you can either use a can or pour your liquid in, in that too. To cook our beer can chicken, on this particular grill, it's a four burner grill. So we're going to have these burners going and we're going to be cooking the chicken in the center. You need to spend a few minutes preparing your grill for cooking your chicken. First we need an area for a drip pan. In this case we're going to use a pan. You can use a foil setup, but beer butt chicken makes an extreme mess inside your grill. So a drip pan is important. I'm going to remove these grates. We're going to use this as a drip pan and we're going to set it between the flavorizer bars. These burners aren't going to be on, so we're going to need to move these over a little bit to hold it in place so that the grates will clear. Now I'm going to add a smoker box. I love using a smoker box for this. It's not a required step, but to get some good smoke flavor on your chicken, it should be done. Put one of the grates back on. Now the drip pan is going to fill with chicken grease. So we want to have some liquid in it when it starts cooking, and we have to check this every so often because the chicken grease will ignite. For this we're going to use part of our beer. In the beer can, you only need a half a can in the chicken stand. So we're going to pour it off in there. Place the last grate. Now we're good to go. The stand's going to go right to the center. Any drippings will end up in the pan. At this stage, we're going to start preheating the grill while we prep the chicken. Again, we're just going to ignite the outside burners. If you have a three burner grill, just have one of the outside burners going and cook your chicken off to the side of it. Now it's time to prepare the chicken. It's relatively easy. You can just dust it with salt and pepper. Or in this case today we're going to use a store-bought rub. With the rub you want to put it on generously and rub it into the skin. You want it to stick pretty good here. Now that we have our chicken thoroughly rubbed. We're going to coat the skin with butter. This is important because the butter will crisp the skin. I generally use a partially cut stick of butter, hold on to the wax, and just rub it on there. Now that we've thoroughly coated the chicken with butter, by the way, throw the remainder of that piece of butter away. Nobody's going to want to eat it anyway. It's time to place it in the stand. We take our stand, as you can see, I'm using a low end stand. You don't really need to get fancy with this, it'll turn out excellent anyway. Place a half to three quarters filled beer can in it. I always like taking a little bit extra, extra rub and adding it into the can. Just provides a better smell when it's cooking. Then we take the chicken, leg sides down, this is the side going on the can. Flipping it up. Slide it on the can. Get it down as far as, you, as far as you can. So it's stable. 
if you're only using a can and not using a chicken stand, you'll have to use the legs once you get it on the grill to keep it balanced. You can see how stable that is. It's not going anywhere once we get it on the grill. As you can see, our grill's preheated. The beer is already steaming in our drip pan. We place the chicken right over the top. If you have a remote thermometer, now would be the time to place it in your chicken. But you can see, indirect heat is going to cook with the steam. The butter will allow the skin to crisp. Today we're just going to use a basic instant read thermometer. We don't want to get too fancy on you. At home I would normally use, this is a dual probe remote thermometer. One probe goes into the chicken and you can monitor the cooking temperature. The other probe just monitors the internal temperature of the grill. It's a good way to check for flare-ups. Doing it this way, you just need to check on it once in a while. Make sure that pan doesn't run dry. Make sure it doesn't catch on fire. We're going to show it to you in about 20 minutes. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, half an hour. You can see the skin is browning nicely. After the first 10 minutes, I turn the heat down. I usually leave both burners on high, then turn them down about a quarter of the way just to get the skin browning. Now one thing I forgot to mention before is you don't have to use beer for this process. Any liquid will do. You really want to stay away from sugary stuff such as coke and that kind of thing just in case it burns in the can. We need to check on this every half hour just to check the drip pan and in a half hour we'll check the temperature. Usually it takes about an hour and a half to cook a five pound chicken. So, okay, the chicken's been cooking for about an hour. You can see the grill's maintaining a good 375 temperature. About 350, 375 where you want to keep it. Look how golden brown that skin is. It's far enough along at this point where we're going to check the internal temperature. Told you we're not going to do anything fancy. I'm going to use a regular instant read thermometer here, just like you would if you didn't have any gadgets. We're going to poke it behind the thigh, thickest part of the chicken. Just a little under 140, this chicken's almost done. You can come back in about 10 minutes, check it again. In the meantime, if you can see the drip tray, we're going to add a little bit of water in there because it's starting to dry out. Here we are. It's about an hour and a half since we've started the cooking time. Pretty sure it's done. We're going to check the temperature. Yeah, 165. So we're going to turn the heat off. And now we're at the most difficult part. Getting the chicken off of the stand. To make it a little easier to get it off the stand, there's these insulated food gloves available, but since I know most of you don't have, you have them laying around your house, we're going to do it without them. The reason this is difficult is the chicken butt actually sticks around the bottom of the can. So what we need to do is to loosen it up and get under here with our tongs while holding the stand down and lift. Now we're going to try the top angle. If you get a good set of tongs, you can get a good hold of it. This chicken just falls apart, so it's not that easy. It can come in from the top. And the can's coming with it, but that's all right. We'll get that out once we get it off here. Now we got to pull the can out. Should slide out easy because the rack was the tight part. Look how beautiful that chicken is. You can see how much grease is accumulated in here. This is why you need a drip pan. The next time you'd fire up your grill, if that was in the bottom, you'd have a nice three alarm fire going. And that's beer butt chicken. Well, even if you don't eat the skin, cook it with the skin on. It keeps the juices in. You can see the, how juicy and tender that is. All the items shown here are available at ForTheGrill.com.